So we're going to add search and pagination to our application. Let's go back to our code and we want to go to our dashboard, go to your app, go to our dashboard and inside our invoices page.tsx. So what we want to do here, so I'm going to open parentheses and the first thing I'm going to do is open a div right here with some tailwind class name which is just gonna have a width of full we are going to get another div here nested here with the class name and it's going to have a class name of flex we're going to say with full items we're going to say center and justify we're going to say between all right that's all the classes we're going to do here we're going to say an h1 Inside the H1, we're just gonna say invoices. And let's give some class name here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a curly brace template string, dollar sign, so that we can get this as a variable. And then class name this. And then we can add our extra style here. Here, we're gonna create another div. Give it a little bit of class here. We're gonna say margin top four. I'm gonna say flex, we're gonna say items center, and then we're gonna say justify between here as well. And then we're gonna have a gap of two, and we're gonna add a media query to margin top eight. It's gonna save it, and inside this div, we are going to add our search component. And that's, this is search component also, it's created and it's coming from our app UI search. And we're gonna create a placeholder for this one does take placeholder. So we're going to just say search invoice it like that, save it. And then just underneath the search, we are also going to add, this is going to be create invoice. So let's go ahead and save this. And just underneath here, what we want to do, we, I'm going to go ahead and copy this section right here on the tutorial because there is a like a commented out section that we are going to come back to. So what's happening in this code? So the third component that we just imported allows the user to search for a specific invoices. The pagination component allows user to navigate between pages of invoices and the table component displays the invoices. All right, so let's go to our search component here. If I um, press on command and then click on here, if you're on a Mac and if you're on Windows, then just do control. Then we are going to go straight to this search component. You will notice that this is a use client. So this is a client component. We also have an input here, and this is going to be our search input. So let's go ahead and create a function called handle search. So we're going to do handle search. It's going to take a term, which is going to be a type of string. And then this is just going to console log our string. Let's just take a look if it can capture whatever the search term they put in the input section. Okay. We're going to add it. So these are all React. So if you know React, this should just how you're going to take a look at this one. We're just going to say like that. And we're going to call handle search with the E dot target. So let's go ahead and test if that act working. So save it. Let's go back to our application. I am going to run the application by saying npm run dev again. And then let's go back here. Let's refresh this one. We got some errors. Hydration failed because the initial UI does not match that was rendered on the server. Now, this is a common error that you, you will encounter. So it's basically you have your server side component but you also have a client side component, right? The server side component, all these informations are also sent out to the client. So the client side has to match with the server side code. So that's called hydration, okay? So the easy way to actually get rid of all this is simply, uh, we are going to close this and I am going to remove this particular file. So let's go back to our code editor right here. Now this is next. This is the file that we, every time you run, it actually runs a build portion of it, right? And then it's it basically caches a lot of stuff. So once it caches, it's, it doesn't match with our current state. So let's go ahead and remove this. There you go. I forgot to add that because it's a flag. Remove and then RF is recursively force flag. So there you go. So there's no mismatch. So invoices, we have a search input. There you go. 
So it's actually console logging each one. So it's actually hooked up. So let's go ahead and update the URL with the search param. We are going to import use params. And that's going to come from our next navigation. Search param. Just create a variable here and invoke use params like so. So inside, we just don't want to print it. We want to update with search param with on the URL. I'm going to say const params is equals to new URL search params with the search param. We're going to we're going to cap um, pluralize this one because it could be more than one input. So if there is a term, then we are going to get the set function that's coming from this params here. And we're just going to set the query key with the term. It's actually not use params, but it's actually going to be use search params, which will then we are going to invoke. And now there's no error. So else we are going to params.delete. We are actually going to delete the query itself. So we have to delete it. Now let's go ahead and import use router and use path name for the next navigation and use the replace method from use router inside handle search function. So we are going to, you know what, I'm going to auto import all this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to say const path name. And that's going to be equal to use path name. And you can see there it's auto importing from next navigation. Let's invoke that function. And then let's, and this is going to be destructured, replace. And that's going to come from use router. And make sure that the use router is not coming from next router, but next navigation. And we're going to call this replace function. And we are going to open up a template string because we are we what we want. We want path name that we just created. And we want to add a question mark. And then we want to add the params dot to string. We're going to make it a string. So I'm going to save that. If we put test one, it's going to be like this Put element. And inside here, we are going to go ahead and add a property called default value, which will have our search params dot get when I get this and we want to do if this exists, then we're going to say to string. So invoke the to string method. So let's go ahead and update the, the table. So we are at dashboard invoices page.tsx. It's going to accept a prop called search params. So we can pass the current URL params to the table component. Destructure the search params. And this is going to be a type of, we're going to say search params. If that exist then the type of this one is actually going to be a query is going to have again we're going to make it optional string and then we are also going to say page again optional it could have it could not have it just before you return something we are going to go ahead and say const let's create a query variable here so, and we are going to say search param. If that exists, then it's going to be query or else it's going to be an empty string. Okay, so we're creating a variable called query, which will look for if there's a search param exists, then get the query param from the search params. If that doesn't exist, then we are just going to replace that with empty string. Let's go ahead and get, create a current page as well. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. We are going to change this one as to number. We want to make because you know search params are all coming as a string type, right? So we're going to turn that into number back. Okay, so if it's page number one, page number two, the two is has to be a number. Um, so here, if that's the case, this otherwise we're just going to be on the page number one and uncomment these lines, save it. It is giving me because I need to import the suspense and I also need to import the table 
And this particular table is an invoice skeleton is also need to import. So let's go ahead and auto import that one, as you can see here. And I want to see if there's a there you go, table.tsx. So let's go ahead, table from. So we are importing this table right here. And then there you go. Now, with these changes in place, let's go ahead and test it out. So you can see we have our table right here. If we don't do anything, then we will see a bunch of list, Michael. There you go, all Michael's invoices. Let's talk about adding pagination now. Okay, so after introducing the search feature, we'll notice the table displays only six invoices at a time. Okay, so you see that after, like, if I do this, it's only do, doing like one, two, three, four, like it's a six resources. So you might be thinking that why do we need a pagination for six results? But this is actually limited to six results. So let's take a look. So because our uh, fetch filtered invoices in data.ts, so let's go back to our application and let's do table and this fetch filtered invoices function, it actually only return a maximum of six invoices per page. So let's take a look where. So we are doing uh, ID, amount, date, status, email from invoices, customer and invoice, customer.id, where customer name is like the query. See that we are actually passing the query here. Uh, text like order by invoices.date, limit items per page. So this is, the, this is where we are taking telling that this is going to be a max of six. So this is a hard coded value. Okay. It, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. So you can do like a 10, 20, whatever you want, but this is a hard coded value that uh, we are utilizing. So uh, here is only showing six because we are only querying six data from our database. So adding paginations allows users to navigate through the different pages to view all the invoices, right? So let's see how we can implement pagination using our URL params, just like we did with search. So navigate to the pagination component. So let's go to our code and there must be a pagination component. There you go. So pagination component is right here in our UI invoices and there it is. And uh, notice that this is also a use client. It's a client component. We don't want to fetch data on this client as this would expose our database secrets. So instead, we can fetch the data on the server and pass it to the component as a prop. So that's what we're going to do. So in dashboard invoices page.tsx, so let's go back to there. Let's delete all this. Page.tsx, again, we are back here. And what we want to do, we are going to import a new so let's go ahead and import fetch invoices pages. And this is going to be, is going to come from the data as well. So fetch invoices pages. This is a new function. And we're going to pass the query from search param as an argument. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, just underneath our const current query and current page, we are also going to do const total pages. Await that to page invoices pages, and we're just going to pass our query. All right, so it is giving me an await because this function, sorry, this function is actually not an async function. So let's go and make it async function and save this. Now fetch invoices pages returns a total number of. So if I if I take a look at this one, so as you can see here from invoices, join customer invoices and customer ID, customer where this is. So there's no limit here. So it actually returns the total number of pages based on the search query. For example, if there are 12 invoices that match the search query and each page displays six invoices, then the total number of pages would be two. All right, so invoices, join customer and invoice, customer ID, where customer name is this, email is this, amount, date, and what status like this one. And then we're gonna have a total pages and math.ceiling. We're calling this number count dot rows dot count slash items per page. So items per page is the six. So if in one page is going to be six page, if it's twelve page total, then it's going to be two pages. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, pass the total pages prop to the pagination component here. So we are going to go down 
And here's your pagination component. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's bring this pagination component from our UI. And then the total pages is going to be the total pages that we just created here. So let's go ahead and save this. Now navigate to the pagination component. I'm going to go back here. And we are going to import use path name. And that's going to be from your uh, next navigation. We are also going to use search params. Okay, import this too. Or right, add this const path name is equal to use path name. And then let's call the function here const search params is equals to use search params. Let's call this function as well, just like we did in our search component. And let's do const current page. Let's change this into a number here. And then we can do search params dot. Let's get the page property to get what page is this. If that's not correct, then always do page number one. Now, next, let's create a new function inside the pagination component called create page URL. Similarly to the search, we'll use the URL search params to set the page, set the new page number and path name to create the URL string. So just underneath the current page, we're going to create const create page URL. It's going to take page number, which is going to be a type of number or a string. And then here we're going to say params equals to new URL search params with search params like that. And then we are going to params dot set. And we're going to set the page with the page number dot to string. Okay. And then we're just going to return the URL here, which is going to be path name question mark. And then we're going to say params dot to string like so. Okay, so create page URL creates an instance of a current search parameters. Then it updates the page parameter to provide it the page number here. Okay, finally, it constructs the full URL, okay, with the path name and everything, uh, and update the search parameters. Okay, so rest of the pagination component deals with the styling in different states, first, last, active, disabled, etc. All this, all this stuff, right? Finally, when the uh, user types a new search query, we want to reset the page number to one. So let's go ahead and, I mean, uncomment this, okay? So all this, as you can see here, he, it's using create the page URL function right here. These are some notes and all of this, okay? So these are all, all good. So these are basically, this component deals with the style, style, style factor. All right. So finally, uh, what we want to do, we are going to go back to our search component here because we want to make sure it reset to the page number uh, to one. And we can do this by updating our handle search function. And uh, let's go back to our handle search function, which is this one. And just underneath, let's go ahead and delete the console log here for a sec. And then let's come right underneath the params we we're actually constructing through the URL search params. We are going to simply do params.set here, which is going to be page one. So that's the default hard coded value. It's always going to be one. So let's go back and take a look. There it is, save. So we have at, at the beginning by default, we have six results and we have our pagination. Take a look at the invoices right here. If you take a go click on the uh, number two, there is a param called page number two. And this is actually going to return the next six invoices that data is saved into our database. Now it's time for us to talk about mutating data.